Unlocked is brought to you by Invincible, a program designed to unlock the potential of people and teams inside your organization. Join companies like Pfizer, Delta, the CDC, Google, and Chick-fil-A, and others in over 116 countries that are currently using this program to increase productivity and develop healthy cultures. Access hundreds of hours of content that is accessible anytime, anywhere. And finally, use real-time data to understand the health of every team inside your organization, which teams are performing and which ones aren't. Then understand the why behind that performance. Get free access to Invincible for 30 days by visiting www.giant.tv slash 30 days. Hi, welcome to another episode of Unlocked. Today, we're going to talk about unlocking not only the potential of people, but also doing that through purpose and organizational purpose. Um, we're going to talk a lot with Steve Curtin, who is been in the hospitality industry for a very long time. It's kind of his his specialty. Um, although today he speaks to a lot of different organizations about this idea of employee engagement. Uh, Twenty years he worked for Marriott, and he worked in human uh, human resources, operations, sales and marketing, and also training and development. Um, he went out on his own in 2007 and created his own organization. Um, he's written two books. We're going to talk a lot about the core of that second book in this interview, but why the first book kind of leads into the second book is really interesting. So, uh, stay tuned for that. We talk about that right at the beginning of this interview. He's worked for TJ Maxx, Carnival Cruise Lines, and of course, Marriott. So we're going to get into this interview. This is something after I was done, right? I listened and I was to myself and my thoughts and I was like, there's something here. There's some nuggets of information I want you to think about because these are those things, right? That are revealed through interviews with special smart people where we go, that's right, right? I didn't think about that. It's right in front of my eyes, but I never really saw it or, you know, understood it the way that they just explained it. It's so much more clear now. And that's the way I felt after this interview. So anyway, we're going to get on with this. Steve Curtin, here we come. Steve, welcome to the show, man. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me on, Scott. So you are on the brink, and by the time this show comes out, your new book will be out. Um, but let's let's back it up a little bit. I want to talk about the transition. This is your second book. Your first book um, was Delight Your Customers, Correct. and that one was about seven ways to raise your customer service from extraordinary from ordinary to extraordinary. Right. Um, now you've written a new book called The Revelation Conversation. Correct. And tell me about the the transition from that first book to this new book. Is there a connection? Why did you write this new book? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good question. The second book is very much a sequel to the first book, uh, Delight Your Customers, which was based on this notion that every job role is made up of two parts, uh, job functions and job essence. And typically when we think of a job role, we tend to think of a job role exclusively in terms of job functions. And job functions is made up of uh, job knowledge, uh, that's sort of the, what you need to know of the job role, and then also job skills, which is how you apply what you know in the job role. And if you possess adequate job knowledge, and if you can demonstrate sufficient job skills, then by extension, you're competent. And that's where many employees and many managers stop. And so in the first book, I introduced this other realm of every job role that uh, transcends job knowledge and job skills, and that's job purpose. So that dimension is job essence. Essence meaning your single highest priority at work. And then the seven simple ways uh, that I address throughout the book talk about ways that you can sort of manifest job essence, ways that you can reflect job essence and job purpose in your job role. And so that was book one and book two picks up where book one left off. Okay. 
are we gonna we're gonna end the show right there we're gonna leave a cliffhanger <laughs> for everybody okay. <laughs> that's just kidding that's no, it. <laughs> yeah let, let's do that then man let's talk about that that new book so you do talk about organizational purpose right. um and that term and i don't know if when people first hear that, they may think organizational purpose. Okay, what's the bigger impact we're trying to make on the world and the global economy and whatever we're trying to do, right? Whether it's, you know, giving glasses or socks to to people in foreign countries or whatever. But but right. I, I want to I want to get granular. I want to talk about what you mean by organizational purpose and what the similarities or different differentiators are in that world. Right. Well, when I talk about organizational purpose, I'm talking about the uh, single highest priority for the organization, why the organization exists. And I'm not talking about corporate social responsibility. I'm not talking about ESG, which is environment, social governance. I'm not talking about uh, DE and I programs, uh, diversity, equity and inclusion programs. Uh, those are all valuable. Uh, those are all worthy, those are all credible, those are all relevant, certainly. But when I talk about organizational purpose, my focus is the uh, highest priority of the organization, why the organization exists. And then you talk about getting granular, even, even uh, below that, uh, what is the unique contribution toward that higher purpose, toward that organizational purpose of every individual job role? What is the purpose, the single highest priority of the individual job role that contributes to that higher organizational purpose? So are you telling me you go through each of the job roles and really dissect it to the point of, hey, how is this? So we, let's start up here. What's the organizational purpose? And then going to each job role and saying, how does this help fulfill that so what's the purpose of this job role and how it help am, helps amplify the organizational purpose side correct yeah in, in other words what is your as as a frontline hourly employee what is your unique contribution to this overarching purpose of the organization and sometimes it's called a purpose sometimes it's called a mission sometimes it's called a vision there are different names used by different organizations uh, different organizations, but you know, essentially, uh, why do we exist? What do we exist to do? Who do we exist to serve? Uh, what is our product or service deliverable? And what what distinguishes us uh, from our competitors or from other companies in general, based on our uh, corporate culture, our character, our background, our tradition, our origin story, our our core values? What makes us unique? And, and yes, uh, definitely drilling down to, as a frontline hourly employee, what is my unique contribution to that overarching purpose based on my job role, my job functions? Okay. You talk about these two journeys at the beginning of your book. Um, right. Can you tell me about those? Yeah, yeah. The two journeys uh, is really the opening chapter, and it's where I really try to clarify this distinction between a personal journey, it's a vertical journey of self-discovery and a horizontal journey of self-development. They both start at birth and they're big questions that we have to ask as human beings. Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? Well, that's the vertical journey of self-discovery. And that, in my opinion, is separate and distinct from the horizontal journey of self-development. Uh, the horizontal journey of self-development is our professional journey. Uh, as it's our intellectual journey as, a, as opposed to the vertical existential journey. It's, it's a public journey that's shared with others as opposed to a private journey of self-discovery um, that is, is only known to us. It's inaccessible to our employers unless we choose to share it. And I make this distinction between the vertical journey and the horizontal journey up front, because there are many, many employers that, you know, again, they conflate, they meld the two journeys. And there is a um, implication that you will have arrived 
in your uh, job role, you'll, you'll have arrived at career nirvana when your life purpose is aligned uh, with the organizational purpose and your purpose at work and um, your professional purpose. I don't believe that to be true. I mean, the literature that I've read suggests that maybe 25% of us have even articulated a life purpose. I think that's high. <laughs> I think that's generous because I've been studying purpose. I've been writing about purpose. I've been reading about purpose. And I'm not sure I've articulated a life purpose um, beyond, I'm a dad, I've got four kids. Uh, I don't know that I have a life purpose beyond raising kind children who are productive global citizens. I'm not sure I've gone much beyond that. Uh, so for an employer to expect for me or anybody else to have articulated a life purpose, number one, and that it would align with the organizational purpose, number two, I think borders on absurdity in most cases. Okay. Do you think that or feel that organizations should help individuals along that personal purpose journey? I think where organizations come in is helping individuals along the horizontal journey of self-development, for sure. The vertical journey of self-discovery, Scott, is singular unto the individual and you know where, where they can help them, I think, is with the overlapping core values of the organization that are aligned with the values, maybe not all of them, but some of them, the values of the individual and grow them in their career aspirations in that way. But I see them as two different uh, journeys. You know, one vertical that I'm really not qualified to talk about, uh, you know, finding your life purpose. I mean, I'm not sure I've articulated, you know, one for me, so I'm not going to be advising others. Um, but I'm, I'm very aware of this horizontal journey of self-discovery, what's involved in that. Um, I think they're two separate journeys. I think you, you more or less have to keep them separate. That's not to say that there aren't certain vocations that lend themselves to, you know, a, a merging of the two. And, and the ones that come to mind are, uh, for instance, clergy, you know, physicians, cause organizations. If you go to work for Greenpeace, for instance, there's probably exceptional alignment between the two. I think if you work for Warby, Par uh, Warby Parker or, or, uh, or Bombas or Patagonia, I think that there will be you know, more alignment, Sierra Club. Um, but if, you know, I, my background's with Marriott Hotels. And if you are uh, applying for a role as a frontline hourly employee at Marriott, I think if they were to invest in ensuring alignment between your purpose in life and the aspirations of the organization, I think there'd be a lot of wasted time and effort. You know, okay. you've got an open job rec, and the, the job rec's been open for six weeks in this environment, maybe longer. Uh, you, need to, you need to fill that role realistically and to begin exploring life purpose in that function is to me, unrealistic. Okay. Would you um, say, let me put this out there for you, that if we do find an individual that is more aligned, personally, vertical, with the horizontal purpose, um, uh, or I'm sorry, with the organizational purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the vertical with the organizational purpose, do you feel like we may, and this is kind of speculation, right? But do you feel like there, there would be more engagement with that employee, or we would get more out of that employee by having that? I do. Okay. So, yeah. so I, and I guess this comes from a little bit of the work that, that I do and, and coaching leaders and, and individuals and teams. And um, also my background in brand strategy and, and telling brand stories for organizations over the course of my career um, that I, I'm right there with you. Now I have in part of my process so that I'm not a total hypocrite having mm -hmm. to like come up with my own purpose Um and doing that and it's it's helping people of the world be who they were designed to be right and 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 i happen to do that through creating empowering and educating people about communication right mm -hmm. and and help enabling that for them to do now i just happen to be in a field where my vertical is aligned with 
my job purpose, right? Like it's one in the same for me. So mm -hmm. it just happens to be one of those jobs where it fits. Um, and you may probably be in a little bit of that space as well as an individual, individual consultant and speaker and, and writer right. and doing what you're doing. So, right. um, well, that that's an interesting concept, an interesting topic, right? To talk about, well, there are going to be some organizations where, you know, if, if I'm hiring a frontline person, do I really, you know, do we invest a ton of time and energy and making sure that their value system, because they may not even understand their value system, do they align perfectly with ours? And if they don't, does their, you know, you know there's a whole discussion right. around that, like where that starts to happen. So that's right. And, and, and that may be a discussion uh, more of core values than purpose. And that, mm -hmm. that may be something, you know, with predictive software as a part of the uh, screening and selection process, um, which Marriott's been involved in with Gallup and SRI and others uh, literally for decades. And I think you can, you can find someone who would be more a fit for the corporate culture in that way. Um, what I'm talking about is sort of a one-to-one -one alignment between your purpose in life and the organization's purpose. I think if, if, if that's your pursuit, if that's your end game as an organization, you're going to be spinning your wheels. Okay, fair enough. Tell me about the, um, what you call the totality of a job role. So this is something mm -hmm. that you mentioned as one of the big mistakes that, uh, that companies are making, um, or what we can possibly learn about, um, from, from the new book. What, tell me about that perspective a little bit. Right. The first part of the book is called reveal. And that's uh, short for reveal the totality of the job role. That just means make the entire job role clear. Most people are aware, as I said at the beginning of this interview, Scott, they're aware of uh, possessing adequate job knowledge and demonstrating sufficient job skills. Because by virtue of doing so, they're then competent. That's where most employees stop. That's where most managers and immediate supervisors stop in terms of employee development. Once they're competent, especially in high turnover organizations, uh, whether it be retail or hospitality or others, uh, once you get somebody sort of up and running, so to speak, and they're competent, they possess adequate job knowledge, they demonstrate sufficient job skills, you move on to the next newly hired employee and you begin getting them up to speed. Well, the totality of the job role suggests that everything that I've mentioned there are job functions, the duties and tasks associated with a job role. That's job knowledge and job skills. But if you transcend that to job essence, which is your single highest priority at work, that's where you enter this realm of job purpose. Uh, why you do what you do the way you do it at work. That's the totality of a job role. What I found is that if you were to interview five people with the same job role individually, and if you were to ask them, uh, would you describe for me from your perspective what you do, what your job entails? Um, they'll, they'll give you different lists, but 80% of those lists will overlap. But if you were to ask them individually, what is your single highest priority at work? you will get a disparate set of answers. So in other words, you'll get somebody, I mean, they'll, they'll think, what does he want to hear? And they'll say things like productivity, uh, sales, quality, safety. They might say customer service. But my point is those lists will be different. Uh, those responses, I should say, will be different. And so where there is alignment, massive alignment in terms of job functions, there is massive uh, disparity around job essence. People simply don't know at work why they do what they do the way they do it. That's really good. Um, I'll do an exercise with, with individuals and, and sometimes I'll, I'll look at the leader and I'll say, Hey, you, you've been, you're not happy with this employee. They're not performing well, something's happening here. So I'll say, you know what? I want you just to go through what a, a, a clarity worksheet, right? Job clarity worksheet, role clarity. And then we, I say, describe all the things that they're responsible for when you should contact this person. And I'm like, do you think this person knows what they're responsible for? And they say, of course they do. Like it's in the job description when they got hired and they can look it up anytime they want. It says in the job description, what they do. Um, but but I think that's what you're saying is that there's so much more to it than that, because that's that 
function of the job. And that's not what we're talking about. You're talking about the essence of that right. job. And that's where we get to a higher level of engagement. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. At the intersection of those three, if you picture a Venn diagram with job function, job skills, and job purpose, where those intersect is where highly engaged employees reside. It's where promoters of your organization who are your most loyal customers, you know, promoters as defined by Bain and company are those customers who are responsible for 80 to 90% of the positive word of mouth about a company or about a brand. They're less price resistant and they have higher repurchase rates. Those are the customers you want. And they're, they're at that intersection. So in the absence of job purpose in the absence of reflecting job essence in your work, you're less likely to have engaged, enthused, inspired employees, and you're less likely to have loyal customers. So good. Good, good, good. So how do you connect? Let, let's go to this, this step. So how do you connect their daily job functions to their role? Like, how do you bridge that gap? Yeah, well, that's really, that's the key. That's the key right there, Scott, is connecting and employees daily work activities uh, to the organizational purpose or the purpose of the job role. And the way you do that is by involving uh, the employee in you know, why they do what they do, the, the way they do it at work. And it's having a conversation. You know, if, if I'm, you know, to use a hotel example, if I'm working in housekeeping and I see my job role as cleaning a guest room. And I view it in terms of possessing adequate job knowledge, demonstrating sufficient job skills. I'm competent at doing so because I'm aware of my job description and I check all the boxes in terms of the, um, the assessment or the evaluation of the room. So in other words, I can consistently, reliably produce a clean guest room. And if I see that as my, my job role, I'm, I'm limited because many of these employees will describe their roles as, as uh, boring, routine, monotonous. Um, but if I can now link it to the organization's highest priority, and let's say, uh, you know, we ask that housekeeper, we ask them, you know, why do you clean a guest room? Well, it's important, the housekeeper might say, well, it's important uh, that we have a, a room that's clean and sanitary for our guest. Okay, why is it important that we have a room that's clean and sanitary for our guest? Well, we uh, want the guest to come back. Okay, we definitely want them to come back intent to return is a key metric. Um, why else would we want the room to be clean? And, and why else would we want the uh, customer to come back? Well, we want the uh, customer to come back um, because you know, it generates revenue for the hotel. Um, we want the customer to be um, a repeat guest, to be a loyal guest, because we know that loyal guests are responsible for 80 and 90% of the positive word of mouth or word of mouth online. And we know that they're less price resistant so that we can perhaps command higher uh, rates, uh, room rates in our competitive set. And so what, we, what we're beginning to do through this conversation, Scott, is we're beginning to link a clean room to a promoter of the hotel. And that may be the uh, hotel's end game is to create a promoter of our hotel. That's your single highest priority. That's the essence of your job role. Perhaps whether you work at the front desk or whether you worked in the restaurant or whether you worked in housekeeping. And so what it does is it elevates a job beyond the job function of cleaning a room to the essence of the job role, which might be attracting somebody um, who's going to brag about the hotel online, who's going to be less price resistant, and who's going to stay with us more often. Elevate above the job function. That is cool, right? Because uh, there are, well, here, let me ask you this question. Do you think that's harder within large organizations than it is within smaller ones? Do you see a discrepancy there? Or do you think it's the same problem? Uh, the same problem being connecting your daily job responsibilities to, to an enduring organizational purpose? Yeah, yeah, I think, so let me, let me, let me frame this up really quick, right? So yeah. a small company that I'm working with, maybe there's 20 employees, right? 
Yeah. Um, how hard, easy do you think it is to link that than it is with, for example, the CDC, um, where I'm working with teams inside there that, you know, they're a, an eight person team within a, a full on government agency and they're not seeing the impact of what they do every day. Well, you've given me a, a title for book three, and, and that might be scaling purpose. I think it's always going to be easier with if you've got 20 people or a dozen people, I think, I think it's always going to be easier to put everybody on the same page. Um, I think that when you scale and you're talking about hundreds or thousands or even 10,000s of you know individuals within your organization, it's going to be difficult to scale purpose um, and to put everybody on the same, on the same page for sure. Okay. Yeah. I think that that's, that's something I've, I've just witnessed. Um, they, they're, they're so removed from the impact that they're making that, uh, they don't, they don't get to see it. Right. And, and for some people that may be okay, but for some personality types, it's what fuels them. It's what gives them that energy to want to keep going and keep progressing and keep investing in what they're doing. Right. If, if I'm, you know, putting arms on a doll on an assembly line, right. Every day for eight hours, but I never get to see that little girl hold that doll and smile and grab that thing and be so excited. Right. Cause it's something they've always wanted you know, that there's a disconnect there that could possibly um, be harming. And, and it's not the organizational purpose, I would assume is, is not to mass produce dolls for little kids, right? It, it could be, you know, something greater than that. And having that employee aligned with that is what I hear you saying is where the impact comes. Right, right. It may be uh, creating uh, childhood memories, you know, which is very different than manufacturing a doll. And, and maybe with all the videos that hit social media, um, you know, that are properly sourced and attributed and permissions are received, but maybe uh, those are captured and played within the organization, whether that be in a onboarding film, whether it be in a training film, whether it be spontaneously in the employee cafeteria uh, of the um, you know, boys and girls opening um, gifts um, over the holidays, uh, let's say, or maybe it's for uh, a birthday celebration. Um, and then sharing those to let people know this is the result of your job functions, which this brings up a good point. It's not to subordinate job functions in favor of job essence. I mean, that's, that's silly. You, you have to be competent. You have to possess adequate job knowledge. You have to demonstrate sufficient job skills. You have to make the doll. <laughs> right? And the doll's got to work and the doll's got to hold up and the doll's got to be attractive and it's got to be uh, properly packaged um, and it's got to be shipped on time. I mean, all these things come into play. So it's not zero sum job functions or job essence. It's really both. Yeah. I talk about that quite a bit, you know, when I'm saying, Hey, you need to just, you need to have a baseline. You need to be good, right? Um, you need to be able to deliver a chicken sandwich, you know, like, AAA, right. You're right. You, you need to at least That's be right. Good, you're but, in Atlanta, <laughs> but yeah, I'm in Atlanta. So we, we got a chicken sandwich. So, but what is that thing that, that lifts you? What is that next element of loyalty that you're looking for that is created through that unique value, that unique contribution that you're bringing to the table um, to, to help you stand out from the competition because everybody can make a good chicken sandwich, right? Right. But what's the thing that elevates you above the rest? Right. Now, is that a rhetorical question? I don't know. Do you want it to be? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Do you have something to add on to that? Well, I, I think that's a great question for that frontline hourly employee. Um, it's a great question for um, a supervisor or a manager or a leader to initiate uh, with an employee, whether they're a frontline hour, hourly employee, whether they're a supervisor themselves, whether they're a sole contributor, whether they're a manager of people, whether they're a department head, whether they're in the C-suite. And the way that that conversation is initiated, Scott, is through this uh, 
revelation conversation, which begins with one question. Oh, you have to buy the book. Too. <laughs> oh, God. Dang it. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, man. Okay. There's, there's the cliffhanger, Scott. Gotcha. Well done. <laughs> well, to be continued. Um, that's really good. Okay. So then, then help us. Where, where do we get the book? Tell me how we find out about that. Oh, you can get the book. Uh, it's available everywhere. It's available on audio now, I believe. Um, at Amazon. It's also uh, going to be available in digital and print format um, worldwide, uh, May 31st. Very cool. Awesome. And so you do a lot of speaking um, as well. And uh, how do people get in touch with you? Um, and what types of audiences are, are you speaking with now? Yeah, well, it's interesting in terms of uh, audience with my first book, Delight Your Customers, that book was written to the hospitality field. And whether you were a frontline hourly employee, whether you're an immediate supervisor, whether you're a department head, the message applied. The second book, uh, The Revelation Conversation, Inspiring Greater Employee Engagement by Connecting to Purpose, is written to a management audience. And so that's really the focus of my speaking uh, with the second book. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, frontline hourly employees can't be exposed to the message, but I prefer that they're exposed to the message through a cascading effect uh, from their, you know, the management level above them. Good. And, yeah. And yeah, and yeah, the way to get in touch with me is the best way is through my website, which is my name, uh, Steve Curtin, C-U-R-T-I-N.com. Okay. How many misspellings do you get on that name? Oh, all the time. Okay. And yeah, you learn to be very forgiving. I figured. I with, figured. with a last name, with a proper name that, that uh, doubles as a noun. Yes. Yep. No, you can't change that one. I could change my first name to S K O T and, you know, it was fine. I don't even have to legally do it, but your last name, right. you're stuck, man. You're stuck. Right. So, well, hey, I appreciate you being on, Steve. This is really, I, I learned something. I love the perspective that you gave on the terminology and the lingo and just elevating the job function to that purpose and making that connection. I haven't had anybody on the show do that yet. And that's really powerful stuff. So very cool, Steve. I appreciate you, man. Wonderful. Thanks for the opportunity, Scott. I love Steve's brain. I love this idea of thinking about that vertical journey of self. It's very private. It's that thing that you're trying to understand yourself and your, your Simon Sinek why, but you're also your purpose and what you're trying to do and in this life, what's gonna help you feel fulfilled. And then also the horizontal growth, the professional growth and where the intersection is of those. Um, actually, I'm gonna draw a little chart after I'm done with this uh, little outro because that is really smart. Think about What's that vertical self growth journey with that horizontal professional growth journey? And how do those interact? And how do those help us feel more fulfilled in life? And then if we put a third dimension on that, how is the place where we work and the organization that we um, are part of every day, how is that aligning with our own journey? A lot of us haven't done a lot of that self-discovery. We think about it and we feel it, but we aren't always invested in it. And likewise, on the organizational side, we do it, but as leaders, we, we help to do it, but are we really invested in it enough? And then are we connecting the dots? As leaders of organizations, are we looking back at those job roles? Are we looking at those individuals and helping bridge the gap from what they do every day to the thing that we are, are focusing on as an organization, our highest priority, our organizational purpose. So I want you to think about that and I want you to think about what you can do as a result of that. So thanks Steve for the insights today. If y'all wanna find out more about me, you can go to scottwaldrow.com. I've got a lot of resources on there that talk a little bit about what I do to help develop teams, leaders and organizations and their company cultures by effective communication or through effective communication. Also, you can go to um, my YouTube channel, like, subscribe, comment there. I would love to have you and uh, find me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect. So thanks everybody. See you next time on another episode of Unlocked. Yeah.